computers, big ground-based computers that are controlling this vehicle are now being synced in, and the azimuth, the takeoff azimuth, 72.5 this is Germany Control. We're at T minus two minutes and 45 seconds and counting. Ghost Grissom is advised he's received one of his final updates on his computer. As his status is go. This is Germany Control. Not only the ground-based computers, the onboard astronaut's computer is being checked and updated, Merrill. Yeah, that's the readout. Uh, he updates by reading out the computer information that's in the program, and it can be changed, of course, by the astronauts in flight, in the program flight plan for the automatic uh, pilot system based on the platform again and the computer. You'll hear those two words. Two, ten, and counting. We are beyond the point of range. Germany counting. control. We count T minus two minutes and counting. T minus two minutes, and now the spacecraft can be seen clearly. The black on top and the white below. That's the spacecraft and its adapter, respectively. After that, the second stage of the rocket, the Titan rocket, called here a Gemini launch vehicle. And down at the base of our picture, the white and black photographic marking on the left of spacecraft poster. This is Germany Control, a little cross-conversation going between Gus Grissom and John Young on the various light uh, positions. Everything in a go condition. The count, T minus one minute and 20 seconds. The water buckets are on, which will cool down the exhaust from this rocket when it lights. As Frank McGee said earlier, it's 430,000 pounds of thrust in the first stage and 100,000 pounds of thrust in the second stage. That's the equivalent in the first stage of about 7,800,000. We're at T minus one minute, T minus 60 seconds and counting. Germany control, we're at T minus one minute, Watch now the cables from the umbilical tower to the left of the spacecraft and booster. We will see some action there shortly. So Merrill, I'm going to... Go to the That's 45 seconds and counting. The range holding a final status check. President Johnson is watching this liftoff by television. Uh, 30 seconds. The quarters have gone to fast speed. 20 seconds. 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, zero, ignition, and we have a liftoff.
guest in the area here at the Cape photographing this flight. And in a very short time, you'll probably hear a sonic boom if you haven't already as these jets accelerate in excess of Mach 1, or in other words, the speed of sound. We're two minutes into the flight. The velocity of the vehicle right now is approaching 3,000 miles an hour. The G-force is building to 3.3 Gs. The crew reports they're in fine shape, and everything looks green here in the control center. We're coming up on staging or booster engine cutoff. We have a staging report. We have can confirm staging. We have second stage ignition and second stage thrust looks fine. So we're three minutes into the flight. The speed of this spacecraft at this time is nearly 6,500 miles an hour and accelerating the G-forces drop off the booster engine cut off. They are now building again. Uh, the crew is now undergoing about 1.5 Gs. The mission director, Chris Kraft, has given the crew a tentative go at 3 minutes and 20 seconds into the flight. That tentative go came just a half a minute ahead of schedule. That's how smoothly things are going. That go decision was due just now, just coming up on it now, and they've got it already. So that is the first indication of how smooth that liftoff went. The astronauts now are adjusting to phase three. This is the VIP area over near the... Two reports from the pilot. Simply, they're simply identifying the, uh, their flight plan very carefully, four minutes into the flight. Gordon Cooper just... Uh, just told Griffin that he's looking mighty good, and Gus gave him a very reassuring laugh. A very calm pilot in command of that spacecraft. President Johnson has been watching all of this and concentrating on it as closely as we have been concentrating on it. Four minutes and 35 seconds into the mission. The uh, velocity of the spacecraft now approaching 12,000 miles an hour. The G-forces in the range of approximately 3.5 Gs. The flight dynamics officer reports excellent steering on this vehicle. We remain in the primary guidance phase all the way. That's the elapsed time clock from the Gemini Control Center. Oh, they're getting a little bit of distortion on some of Griffin's reports, uh, but they're all very affirmative sorts of reports. I think it's in the communication system itself. We're five minutes and 20 seconds in, and we're rapidly approaching the sustainer engine cutoff point. This is the last major power phase for the kick in the wall. 10 seconds from Pico, or the container engine cut, second stage cutoff. Running by for confirmation of Pico. Speed is over 15,000. The sustainer engine leads. The director advised and asked Gordon Cooper to tell Gus Griffin that he is go. And Molly Brown is very happy about that go. Speed now, 17,400 miles an hour. It's up to the spacecraft to adjust its speed for proper orbital insertion, which will happen over Bermuda. This is the first powered flight control by astronauts.